India has a big role to play in this project and therefore it's very important to an uh, Indo-Bangla energy dialogue. Um, it has many important Indian players that are pushing the Ramphal project, NTPC, Indian Exim, uh, BHEL, Price, Waterhouse, Coopers, um, and, and uh, it's all targeting an area that we both are so proud of. It's a UNESCO World Heritage uh, listed mangrove, Shundorban, uh, which means beautiful forest in Bengali. Uh, to take us through this is another spirited campaigner, just like Maha, someone who is now doing it from afar because she currently lives in Germany. Uh, Tony is still passionately involved with the Save the Sundarbans campaign and works with Orgewald, a German NGO. Earlier, she was involved with 350.org, ActionAid Bangladesh, and BRAC in Bangladesh. Uh, Tony Notion is now a global climate justice activist, and we're very happy uh, that she will take us through um, the Ramphal project um, in, with some details. Thank you, Vidyadi. Um, it's a bit also intimidating to be presenting or talking about Rampal because as you said, like everybody knows it's a big iconic project and also my involvement with the project is much, um, maybe many of you are for sure involved with the movement for much longer than I am. I got involved with it from 2016 more actively, of course, when I was in Bangladesh. I was part of the movement, but uh, when we, uh, in 2016, when we turned the movement into a global um, campaign, that was also when I started getting um, heavily involved with Trample. But um, I will just, uh, of course, for the sake of it, also share quickly a bit of the background information, which most of you also know, and I'm also sure there would be many things to add on, because as I was saying, it's a big movement. There has been many different actors. And it is one of those now, it's uh, for nine years that uh, this, um, uh, the movement against Rampal Coal Power Plant is going on, or Maitri Thermal uh, Super Power Plant, as its official name is. So I would just try to give a bit of, to, to because I know where everyone is at, to kind of capture everyone to, on the same page, I will try to quickly run through the basic information about uh, the Rampal Power Plant, Shundarbans, why we care, what, why, why do we care if Shundarban gets destroyed or does it really get destroyed from Rampal? And then I will, of course, try to, like most people would try to bring the conversation to the my area of comfort regarding the, the global campaign and now what we're doing in Germany um, against uh, Fischner. Um, I will need to share my screen. So I think I would need, um, do I have the authorization already for screen sharing? Yeah, if you are permitted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you see already? Yeah, we can see it. Yes, okay. and it's full screen. Okay, cool. So, um, this is just a brief about Rampal Power Project. Yes, it's a Maitri, it's called Maitri Super Thermal Power Project. This is all the information that you can get also from the official project website. So the land requirement has been 915 acres. It says, of course, imported coal and daily coal requirements when operational will be 12,000 tons. Um, one key thing is Indian Exim Bank is the main financier of it. And of course, there's NTPC, 15% Power Development Board of Bangladesh is 15%. So it's like a 50-50 joint partnership, but the financing is mostly um, done by the Indian Exim Bank. Um, the location, here we have a beautiful Google Earth picture where we can see why uh, we, what's the relationship between Rampal Coal Power Plant and Chunderbans? That the Rampal, this thermal coal power plant is 10.5 kilometers away from the uh, reserve forest, the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, and also, yeah, so you, you get an idea why are we putting the connection between these two. And about Chunderbans, again, of course, a uh, table to put in some numbers to show you that, oh, we know what we're talking about to convince all of you that, okay, we are not. Just saying things. We have done our homework, and you see that um, yeah, we have uh, endangered species. As this forest is specifically uh, the Ganges and Iravati dolphin, but it's only, of course, not about the species or the animals. It's also Shurbans is home to uh, for livelihood for many people who lives around uh, the forest. Uh, livelihoods depend on it, and also from um, Okay, yes, we have some um, plants and, and more pictures, but then this slide that I want to show you is it's from a recent 
the Amphan cyclone that um, uh, just uh, happened like last month that took place and hit, uh, of course, uh, West Bengal and Bangladesh. And this is taken from this uh, website where it was tracking. You could track the um, cyclone and it shows the wind speed. And you would see that drastically for, so the purple is a higher wind speed, something as something around 70 MPH, and then the orange um, uh, is uh, goes down to 30. So we see suddenly it looks like at the border of Bangladesh, the wind speed is drastically re getting reduced. And what is that? We don't know, but we know that's actually the Shundarvan. So because from this map, you don't see what's this invisible thing that's drastically reducing the impact of the, um, the, the cyclone uh, wind speed. But yeah, that's the coastal forest. So that also elaborates why it's so important for us, especially when Bangladesh is going to be one of the most uh, uh, impacted countries from uh, the climate change. So we will, we will have more frequent uh, cyclones and also the sea level is rising. So at that point, to destroy a forest, that a coastal forest, a mangrove, that literally acts as a barrier, natural barrier and livelihood for so many uh, natural uh, species and humans is very counterintuitive. But then is it really going to kill the forest? I mean, why do we say that, oh, um, the Rampal Parpan will kill the forest? What is the deal? Okay, so the deal here we can see from this data is taken from uh, Bangladesh British Andalun and Government Pension Fund of Norway, a joint study uh, from report. So this is just the projected emissions uh, that the Rampal uh, Coal Power Plant, once operational, uh, will emit. And just try to create some, because we humans, we are not very good at numbers. We need some kind of um, reference point on what does it mean. So kind of then we, we tried to also create some reference points. Okay, this would mean 7.9 million tons of uh, CO2 would mean equivalent of cutting 340 million trees. Um, there are these tons of small particles that would end up uh, resulting in lung diseases and water and earth pollution, so we get it, okay, there will be a lot of pollution. Um, so IUCN mission report, uh, IUCN, uh, there was a specific in 2016, uh, because uh, Shunarvans is a world uh, UNESCO heritage site, there was, a, and, and uh, so there was a team coming, visiting, and then they, they this report that they gave, there were four uh, key concerns that they raised. Um, of course, so there will be pollution from uh, coal ash by air, there will be pollution from uh, wastewater and waste ash that will be um, getting dumped, there will be increased shipping and dredging, uh, the, because the coal would be uh, brought to uh, the, the rental coal power plant uh, through um, ships, uh, through the rivers, and then of course the community impact of industrial and related development infrastructure that's going to take place. So Rampal is not only this one thermal uh, power plant, but there's also this whole industrial area which is plan being planned to build to reuse the, the, the ash and the coal um, uh, waste from. So there's some cement factories that are planned and it's like the whole industrial complex that's um, going to be built. Um, so coal, uh, this is also another just to make it visual because we are never good with uh, just words and numbers. So this is uh, from cases from Dominican Republic and US that the coal ash disposal, what impact it could have. So these are um, direct impacts on human. Sorry for making you, um, yeah, look at this distressing images, but just to put an idea of what we are expecting to deal with. And so as this was clear, so from 2011, when uh, this power plant was, this agreement was signed the, um, uh, between India and Bangladesh government that was resistance, um, it started from the right, like from the very beginning. I think this is also one of the most beautiful thing about this um, resistance that it started right from the beginning when it started. And it, at the same time, it's very unique because it was the first kind of the coal power plant, but it started in Bangladesh, like the, before the movements, it was always uh, in case of the Fulbury um, coal uh, uh, resistance, like the open pit coal mining risk, it was uh, people, it, it was, uh, it would have displaced around 200,000 uh, people and taken away a, a large uh, amount of land that is used for um, uh, crop uh, growing rice. But with the Rampal Thermal Coal Power Plant, it was a lot about Shundarbans, the forest. I mean, of course, it was also about people being evicted. But this whole discussion around why we don't want coal and the importance of protecting a forest and at the same time as uh, Mahapa was already discussing before that it was not only about coal but this whole questioning this development model this what do we prioritize and how do we have to do this compromise against because the government uh, reaction was first that oh we need to provide food for people and job for people we we cannot afford to protect the forest and from the movement side the argument was like we don't want to be choosing between environment or development. We want 
different kind of development where we protect both and one cannot go uh, uh, except the other. Or one of the slogans, the most popular slogan I um, think was became in, in the Shunar Bans movement was, um, there is alternative to coal, there is alternative to uh, energy, but there is no alternative to uh, Shunar Bans. So this, I think, is fundamentally different or unique was also in the history of Bangladesh movement because, of course, we have a very rich history of resistance from the from already from the British, like uh, from the last 200 years, Bengal has always been a very active or rich ground for resistance. And in this way, um, of course, there was movements against like, the Chipko movement in India, but it was in a different part of India. So this way, in terms of environmental movement, um, in my limited, like this, what I've encountered and read, I think that's why also this Rampal Pogata movement is unique. It kind of makes this um, point um, specific um, case. So here we see the movement was very big. Of course, this is one of the picture from a big mobilization in Kulna. Um, uh, uh, and there was a huge long march people. In one of the long march, there were over three, three days, 5,000 people walked uh, more than 500 kilometers. And over this time, more than 30,000 people participated. So we see that this movement really became big. And, and if it was really like an um, operating or acting um, democracy, there is no way this power plant, this project would still go ahead, considering how many people, like the, the, the general consensus against this power plant. And there were, we know, pregnant mom, I mean, Mahapa, and, and most of you already know maybe, but I could say even better that there were moms who were pregnant doing sit downs with their toddlers saying that I don't want this power plant to go ahead because I want my kids to be able to breathe in a, in a, in a country in Bangladesh where there's still fresh air. So there was all, all people from all walks of life came together to protest. This is also, this is just to show like how artists also join in. This is also a beautiful picture to show this, to capture this concept of people, animals, everybody like bonding together to resist. Um, yeah, this is also amazing. A, um, the logo of the, the um, this movement kind of like Rajesh Nurbaz and you see the tiger that greets Shunarban in Bangla. So this is also uh, Mika Mahdi. So these are all, all these artists and activists voluntarily worked and produced the beautiful amount of uh, art, song, and there's, yeah, the songs, of course, I cannot present here to you. There's been um, uh, plays uh, being done, songs being written, stories being generated. So this has been a beautiful, colorful movement in that sense as well, like where you see everybody coming together and using all forms of tools to, to express the, uh, the, the, the concern and of the dissent. Um, as I had a glance, of course, this is like the long march happened, the demonstration, there were open letters sent to the Prime Minister of Bangladesh and India. There were uh, more than uh, exactly 12 expert reports that was also shared with the Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in 2017. So it's not that they don't know. There has been, uh, Amar Pauli also said there were very expert reports and at the same time what uh, was also the, um, the alternative energy plan. So it was from the movements it was not only we are just saying no to everything that you say because that was also something government was saying oh you always say no but then what what we what is your plan and then we said hey okay we also have a plan here is our plan. So this is a um, comparison uh, that I just quickly present if you want to look at it it's also available online um, the, the National Committee of Bangladesh uh, that we already shared with you and CBD uh, prepared uh, a completely volunteer the volunteer team worked on this uh, Maha Mahapa was all part, one uh, a part of that volunteer team there are also amazing researchers who were um, part of this uh, preparing this power plan and here you see that what the alternative is being proposed is actually even better than the government wants. So in terms of the um, long-term goal is 2041, the short term was 2021. And here, um, uh, of course, activists also talk about using the natural gas. That is uh, a local essay is a transitional fuel. Um, and what the point is that we don't need, because a lot of the argument also comes, oh, you need coal, Bangladesh needs coal as a bridge technology and this is also that we can clearly say no we don't even need coal not even for our bridge technology we need it because even for that we can use natural coal that we have locally if we have to use if we must use we can use it it's it's 50 percent less um carbon intensive than coal it's cleaner and if you produce it uh, within our local capacity that we have our, our government bapex this um energy uh, uh, uh board uh, they they could produce it uh, they could extract it and it would be also much cheaper. We don't need any kind of international, multinational company involvement. And of course, this is one of the reasons probably why this is never an option that's considered because there's not much money to be made or kind of the cronies that, um, that has been discussed already. Um, yeah, so there's no big business opportunities here. So also you see other, uh, in terms of the cost comparison, 
uh, it's much cheaper and, and this uh, 2 of 0.79 and the, the according to the um, NCBT's alternative energy plan will be 5.10. And besides this NCBT's alternative development, there's also a, a, a beautiful detailed, very technical report by Bread for the World and uh, Coastal um, um, CPD, um, I forgot the name of the um, so there were these two jointly produced uh, report that shows that it's already possible to uh, produce 100% renewables for Bangladesh in the next 50 years, just with planning, and it, it's going to be cheaper. So even not this, uh, even if the, somebody wants to defy this uh, um, plan because it's it's from the movement, so there's also very technical uh, and different kind of reports that also exist. So what did we get as a response, of course, uh, amazingly, the uh, police brutality. Now, Tony. Tony. Uh, say again? We need to wrap up now. How, how long do I have? Uh, you're out of time, but half a minute. Okay, ooh, that will be difficult. Okay, then, so there's, hmm. so there's, of course, the police okay, brutality. Okay, we'll give already... your voice one minute. Okay. I mean, maybe a lot of the people talk over a bit, so I will take uh, just a bit more quickly. I hope that's fine. So this okay. is, yes. Yeah, so I won't stop a woman talking okay. because we need more South Asian women talking. Otherwise, it's only the men who talk, talk. Yes, so you talk. I'm glad. Thank you for the solidarity. So, um, yeah, so here's the, some, some of the police brutality that we know that we received in 2016. It got, so it was very difficult continue being mobilizing on the streets inside the country. Um, so this is just to give a quick look of the upstream actors. The financing that's coming through, Exim Bank India, there's also uh, one iconizing here, this is Standard Charter Bank, also is financing uh, run or directly through uh, Exim Bank. Um, and of course, the Fischner, the German company, and now I'm just going to arrive. So quickly, so of course, then from 2016, we started to mobilize globally. Um, we have been to the UNESCO World Heritage uh, Committee meeting, and then um, it was in 2019. So we have had very different civil society. And we have gotten support from different international civil society as well, and also international activist group. We have had a global day of protest from Bangladeshi diaspora in 2017. This is the 2019 World UNESCO Heritage Committee's decision that clearly says that all large-scale industrial infrastructure should go ahead, and it does not make any exception for the Rampal Coal Power Plant. Um, and now we have this Stop Fischner campaign in Germany that we started because Fischner is the chief engineering um, consultant firm that is constructing Rampal Coal Power Plant. As we see at this stage, that this is the leverage that we have from abroad. Because if we can create enough pressure, it's a German company, it's uh, involved with this very controversial project. And while Germany tries to look, oh, we are being responsible, we're moving away from coal, but there are still companies, international companies, making money from coal businesses. And kind of from this point, we have been able to mobilize, connect a lot of. So this is a um, poster from this action we did last uh, month in front of uh, Fischner's uh, office. And you can see how many different activist groups we could also mobilize from a very um, left interventionist, a link is from a very left to uh, young greens, also like quite liberal, um, moderate uh, group. So this is also one of the unique things of, of, of this campaign in, in Germany that we see that under behind this campaign, there is a, a large different diversity of actors are coming ahead. And here, just some pictures for you. And yeah, this is also from this uh, German, German coal, Germany, coal mining Germany, where we did this action recently to send solidarity and kind of share yeah, so then the, the idea was to, the, the idea that we're pushing ahead that even inside when the country it's becoming difficult to mobilize and how we can still create pressure globally by connecting with different actors and kind of mobilizing and this we can use also a good example of global solidarity to also extend that it's the one fight because all the companies they are united in their businesses and money making so what we need more and more that the activists join hands in our resistance as well